In this video, we're going to take a look at the laws of indices. Now, this is the very first video in our A-Level Math series. And for this video, we're essentially just recapping the laws of indices. So there shouldn't be any new content in here really to you. Um, nothing that should surprise you. It is just a recap and revision of what you covered in GCSE Maths. So let's start with the first two examples here. So the first one says simplify. So we've got 27 over 8x to the power of 9. And then this is all raised to the power of a third. Now, for something like this, what I do here is split this up. So obviously, I've got my numerator and my denominator, but this is all raised to the power of a third. Now, when you have a fraction like this raised to a power, this is equivalent to the numerator to that power divided by the denominator to that power. So what I've got is 27 to the power of a third. And then this is all divided by ax to the power of 9. So ax to the power of 9. And that's all raised to the power of a third. So the numerator here is a lot easier to work with. So we're just finding the cube root, remember, for a fractional power like this. Then the denominator tells us what root we're taking. So this is the third root of 27. So the cube root of 27, which is 3. That gives us 3. And then for the denominator here, we've got to consider this in two parts. So let's start with the 8 first. So just like we did with the numerator, I've got 8 to the power of a third. So that's the cube root of 8, which is 2. And then I've also got this x to the 9 to the power of a third. So what I've got here is a power raised to another power. And the laws of indices state that when we've got a power raised to another power, then we find the product of those powers. So what I've got here is x to the power of 9 times a third. So 9 times a third is the same as just dividing 9 by 3. So what I'm going to get here is x to the power of 3. Okay, so our final solution here is 3 divided by 2x cubed. Okay, so that's our simplest form for that example. For the next one here, we're asked to solve the equation. So I've got 2 to the power of x plus 5 is equal to 8 to the power of x minus 1. Now, where do we begin with something like this? Well, what I want to do here is reduce one of the bases or sometimes both bases. And what I mean by the base here is this number here. So in this case, the base of the left hand side is 2 and the base of the right hand side is 8. Now, the reason we are reducing the bases here is because we want to solve this equation. So we're looking to find the value of x. And the reason we need to reduce the base is because it's a lot trickier to work with it when they are different bases like this. But if we can reduce the base, so let's say they are both base 2 here, then in that case, because this is an equation where they're equal, so the left hand side is equal in value to the right hand side, then in that case, the powers must be equal. So how can we express 8 here as a power of 2? Well, that would be 2 cubed. So what I've got is 2 to the power of x plus 5 is equal. So this is going to be 2 cubed. So 2 cubed to the power of x minus 1. All we've done here is replace this 8 with 2 cubed. Now, our laws of indices state here, we've got a power raised to another power. So to slim, so simplify here, can't speak, then we just multiply. So I've got 2 to the x plus 5 is equal. So multiplying the powers together here, I get 2 to the 3x minus 3 there. Now, because the base is the same here and they're equal in value, it sounds silly, but that's what this equal sign here tells us, then the powers must be the same. So Therefore, we've got x plus 5, which must be equal to 3x minus 3. Okay. Now, at this point here, this should hopefully be nice and straightforward to solve. I'm going to subtract x off both sides, and then I'm going to add 3 to both sides here. So what I'm going to get then is 2x is equal to 8. And therefore, to get x, we just divide by the coefficient here of x, which is 2. So x is equal to 4. Now, you could verify that solution by substituting x equals uh, 4 into this equation here. Okay, And what you should find is the value of the left-hand side is equal to the value of the right-hand side. Okay, But you will find that, but that might just be an exercise that you want to um, check there. Okay, So that's the solution to the second example. And then another two examples to work through here. Again, slightly more complicated than the first two. So for this one here, again, we're just simplifying. So I've got 64x cubed over 125y to the 6, and then this is all raised to the power of 2 over 3. 
Now again, just like we did with the previous example here, we take the power of the numerator and the denominator separately. So what I've got here is 64x cubed. So 64x cubed, and that's all raised to the power of 2 over 3. So we've got 2 over 3 there, 2 over 3. And then we divide this by the denominator. So that's going to be 125y to the 6. And again, we take that power separately. So that's going to be 2 over 3. So 2 over 3 there is our power. And what I need to do now is just simplify the numerator and the denominator separately here. So if we start with the numerator, again, I've got to consider this now in two parts. So I've got the 64 here raised to the power of 2 over 3. Now, for a fractional power like this, this one's a little bit more complicated than the last example because my numerator is 2 now. So again, we take the cube root of 64, which will be 4. But now the numerator tells us that we need to square that. If you see in the last example here, this was a 1. So all I did was I raised 3 to the power of 1, which is just 3. So we didn't need to do anything. But for this one, because we're raising it to the power of 2 now, well, like we said, the cube root of 64 is 4. We then square that, so I get 16. And now we've got x cubed times 2 over 3. Because I've got a power raised to another power, we just times the powers together. So 3 times 2 thirds would give me 2. So I get 16x squared there. So that's my numerator. For the denominator now, well, I've got 125y to the 6. So again, let's consider this now in two parts. So I've got 125 to the power of 2 over 3. Well, if I take the cube root of 125 first, that would give me 5. And then again, the numerator here of our fractional power is 2. So we need to square that. So 5 squared would be 25. So we get 25 there. And now we've got y to the 6 raised to the power of 2 over 3. So again, we've got a power raised to another power, so we need to multiply these powers together. So 6 times 2 over 3, that would give me 4. So I've got 25y to the 4. And that's our simplest form there for that example. And for the very last example here, we're asked to solve the equation 4 to the x minus 2 is equal to 8 to the power of 3x plus 1. Now, this one's slightly more complicated than the last example that we saw. Um, that was similar to this here. And the reason for that is because if you notice, if we take a look at the larger base here, this 8, I can't reduce 8 to be a power of 4. So what I need to do for this example is reduce both of the bases. Okay, and what we're going to reduce both of these bases to is 2. So how do we write 8 as a power of 2? Well, that would, that would be 2 cubed. We've already seen that. So that's going to be 2 cubed. So let's just write that down. So 2 cubed. And then that's the power of 3x plus 1, 3x plus 1. And on the left-hand side here, we've got 4. So how do I write 4 as a power of 2? Well, that would be 2 squared. So we've got 2 squared, and that is to the power of x minus 2. So now we've got a power raised to another power on both sides of my equation. So if we simplify the left-hand side and the right-hand side, so if we start with the left-hand side, I've got 2 to the 2x minus 4, and that is equal to 2. So again, multiplying these powers together here, 3 times 3x gives me 9x, and then 3 times plus 1 gives me plus 3 there. Okay, so again, because we've got the same base here, and these obviously are equal in value, that's what the equal sign tells us, sounds obvious, but that's the key idea here, then the powers must be equal. So in that case, we've got 2x minus 4 is equal to 9x plus 3. Okay, so again, we're just solving here for x now. So I'm going to subtract 2x off both sides, and then I'm going to subtract 3 off both sides. So I'm going to get 7x is equal to minus 4 minus 3, giving me minus 7. And then finally, we just divide by the coefficient of x here, which is 7, to get x. So x is equal to minus 7 divided by 7 which would give us minus 1 there, okay? And that's our solution. And that actually brings us to the end of this video. In the next video, we're going to take a look at thirds.